history for the love of history. I've never used this degree. Uh, I just thought that going to law school was like going to trade school. And one considered oneself a real intellectual. One had to really study something serious. Uh, and I've never regretted it because C. Van Woodward was at the university, just the opportunity to study in one of the the foremost historians in American history was worth uh, every moment of it. It wasn't a very practical solution, but it certainly gave me an appreciation uh, for um, why we would want to preserve as much of our history as we could. We've got budgets that are busting at the gut. The president is right to hold down virtually everything, but if I may remind um, the subcommittee, this is an authorization. All it does is to set a limit. You go and ask um, the many uh, uh, agencies, federal agencies, not to mention commissions, when they last got the authorized amount, and most of them, the memory will not serve most of them well enough to be able to tell you. So I would think that we owe the commission a reasonable uh, increase in keeping with these times, to be sure. But I would think it would be very pitiable uh, to leave them where they were after the testimony that you've heard today. And I thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I thank the gentlewoman. Uh, uh, do you have to leave? I to. Unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, until y'all okay. pass my bill, <laughs> I'm the one that done that to leave. But you have to leave. <laughs> I do. I see. Would you? Is there another panel? Hearing? Yes. Yes, sir. I will be glad. All right. At, at this point, there are no further questions for this panel. We will dismiss this panel and ask the third panel to come forward. Thank you, Thank sir. You. I want to thank this panel for coming forward. The, when the votes are over, the, the chairman will return. Uh, and we're going to go first to Dr. Peter Gottlieb, the State Archivist of Wisconsin, representing uh, the Society of American Archivists, of which he is the current president. Uh, Dr. Gottlieb joined the State Historical Society of Wisconsin in 1991 after serving uh, in the archives at Pennsylvania State and West Virginia University. Uh, Dr. Gottlieb. My name is Peter Gottlieb. I am the State oh, Archivist me. of Wisconsin. I'm sorry, the chairman, the chairman does swear in all the witnesses. Oh, sorry. No. You know the words. <laughs> uh, all rise. All rise. And hold up your right hand, if you would. Do you swear uh, solemnly? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Let the record reflect that the witness is answered in the affirmative, Mr. Dr. Gottlieb. My name is Peter Gottlieb. I am the State Archivist of Wisconsin and Director of the Library Archives Division of the Wisconsin Historical Society. I am here today 
representing the Society of American Archivists, North America's oldest and largest organization of professional archivists, representing more than 5,700 members across the United States and in more than 20 countries. On behalf of my association and the wider archives community in the United States, I wish to thank you for convening this hearing. I offer my testimony in favor of increasing the authorization for the National Historical Publications and Records Commission's competitive grants program to $20 million and creating a new program for pass-through grants that is also authorized at $20 million. In his election speech, in his election night speech, President-elect Obama spoke eloquently of the enduring power of our ideals, democracy, liberty, opportunity, and unyielding hope. He added that our stories are singular, but our destiny is shared. From community institutions, like public libraries and local historical societies throughout America, to the National Archives vaults here in Washington, archives keep our stories as a public trust and make them available to all. Just as we protect our country's natural resources to sustain our way of life, we must also safeguard this nation's archives in order to strengthen democratic government and to pass down from one generation to the next our record of progress and the values our society upholds. We need well-preserved and accessible archives in order to write our school textbooks and, de and design our instructional websites, in order to produce our documentary and feature films about America, in order to engage all citizens of our country in the continuing experiment of democratic government, and in order to inspire people around the world with the standards of human rights and opportunity that the United States as its best represents. NHPRC grants have provided essential support for this national goal, but its current authorization falls short of today's need. NHPRC is the only federal program whose specific purpose is helping archivists and other professionals meet this national obligation. Its grants increase access to historical records and publish documentary editions for use by classroom teachers, students, journalists, biographers, local historians, lawyers, genealogists, documentary filmmakers, and many others. In the majority of cases, NHPRC grants support new jobs for skilled professionals who do the preservation, digitizing, organizing, cataloging, or editorial work. NHPRC grants contribute to our nation's documentary heritage in the following areas. Processing archives to make important primary sources more quickly and easily available. Developing and testing solutions to the challenge of preserving computer-generated records. Providing technical assistance and training in archives work uh, for archivists that need to improve their skills. NHPRC's competitive grants for archives are essential and must be funded at a higher level. But these grants by themselves cannot meet the range of needs to preserve and ensure access to all the historical records kept in American archives. Many local government and community repositories whose records constitute a vital part of our documentary heritage cannot qualify for competitive grants and do not benefit from any type of NHPRC funding. I, as you mentioned, I am Barbara Teague, and I'm the Vice President of the Council of State Archivists, and I'm the State Archivist in the State of Kentucky, the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Um, I've worked there for 27 years, and I have 27 years of experience with NHPRC grants, and I know how effective those grants have been and how much more remains to be done with the grants. Um, COSA, the Council of State Archivists, represents all 50 state archivists, the District of Columbia, and the U.S. territories. COSA's, COSA's mission is to strengthen state and territorial archives in their work to preserve the American historical record. Most state archivists also serve as the chairs of their state historical records advisory boards, which we've all talked about earlier. On behalf of COSA, the archival profession, and most of all, the millions of citizens who rely on archives and records, I ask that you reauthorize in HPRC not at $20 million, but at $40 million. Um, 20 million of that 40 million would go to national competitive grants, sort of like a program that we have now. And 20 other million would go for pass-through grants to the states that the State Historical Records Advisory Boards would then administer on their own according to the needs and priorities within the states. 
Over the last three years, state archival agencies have endured very extreme budget cuts, many in excess of 20 percent, my own agency 25 percent. This has had a very negative effect on our nation's records and on the individuals who depend on those records. In an era of significantly increased emphasis on government transparency, government records continue to play an even more crucial role. From deeds, marriages, court cases, students' school transcripts and wills on the local government level, to documentation of licensing, human services, and environmental controls on the state level, to military service, health care, and citizenship among the many functions of the federal government, records touch each of us as individuals. When archival documents are preserved in our states and communities, we protect the evidence of land ownership, the rights and privileges of individual citizens, the right to know about the workings of government, the genealogy of our families, and the cultural heritage of America. NHPRC has consistently provided the federal government's only support to archives in nearly every state, and that's NHPRC, not IMLS, and not NEH. In Mississippi, emergency funds after Hurricane Katrina helped save valuable historical records on the Gulf Coast. NHPRC is currently supporting the New York State Archives and identifying and preserving the documents of families who lost, who lost loved ones during the World Trade Center attack. Every state, every territory, every local community has similar needs, from developing disaster plans that protect essential records, to documenting the history of the Civil Rights Movement, to creating tools to bring historical records into the classroom and get children excited about learning. In my own state, a grant of $200,000 from the NHPRC in 1983 ultimately, ultimately led to the Kentucky Local Records Program, which has awarded over $16 million in grants. That's an 8,000 percent return on investment. The program has preserved almost every important record in Kentucky's 120 counties. Yes, we have 120 counties, and they each have about 50 offices. And that has created countless jobs to care for the archives across our state. And please know that money for archival projects means money for jobs. COSA's analysis, uh, analysis of existing NHPRC grant projects shows that at least 75% 70, of all grant funds are used for staff, demonstrating that money for archives generally equates to money for jobs. My first archival job was working on an NHPRC grant, and I did a quick survey of all the other state and territorial archivists, and there were at least uh, 12 of us who started our professional careers with NHPRC funding, and we really didn't make very much money, I can tell you. Um, but because of, not just because of that, but because we know as the chairs of our state boards, we see the needs in, in the states, I ask on behalf of all the state archivists in the United States and all the territorial archivists to allow NHPRC to make a comprehensive, enduring impact to benefit our constituents and yours in every single state and territory and every community by increasing the NHP, NHPRC appropriation to $40 million. NHPRC funding is essential to preserving the history of our nation. I would really be happy to answer any questions about NHPRC and its effect on our citizens and how state archivists need more resources to care for essential government records. Thanks again for this great opportunity to speak about the NHPRC. Thank you, Ms. Teague. Uh, our next witness is um, Kay Lanning Amentru, if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, mm -hmm. Director of Archives for uh, True County, Georgia, here today representing the National Association of Government Archives and Records Administrators. Uh, Ms. Ms. Amentru has been Director of True County Archives since 1985. Good afternoon, Representative Norton and members of the subcommittee. My name is Kay Lanning Minshew, and I have been director of the Troop County Archives in LaGrange, Georgia since 1985. I'm representing the National Association of Government Archivists and Records Administrators, NAGARA. I also co-chaired the Council of State Archivists' Closest to Home Project about gov local government records. 
I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak in support of reauthorization for the National Historical Publications and Records Commission, NHPRC. NAGARA is a professional organization dedicated to the effective management of government information and its continued availability at all levels of government. Our constituents include archivists and records managers for over 21,000 local, state, tribal, and federal government entities in the United States responsible for records in their care. The records that document the actions of governments and their communities and citizens. Local government agencies are inundated with large collections of records and are begging for assistance with maintaining and providing access to these resources. NHPRC is a valuable partner and key to the continued availability of the records legacy of these entities. The records we house in local repositories include a wide variety of materials. The majority are, is paper documents, but a growing amount is available in electronic format. Records include birth and death, voter registration, census forms, coroner's inquest, criminal cases, and much more. Materials include land records which deeded a slave woman and her young son to a family leaving Georgia for Texas. Other items helped bring to justice a cold case murder that had lain dormant for over 30 years. We also have files that show environmental and cultural changes over the years and support homeland defense. Air heritage is at risk every day. And archives or courthouse burns or destroyed by a tornado and unique collections are lost or electronic records can't be opened. On a personal level, perhaps a recording your father made about his World War II service has been damaged over time. Your grandchildren will not be able to hear his voice or his story. Records at the local level touch the lives of our citizens every day and in a very direct way. NHPRC provides grant funding that is essential to ensuring the preservation of archival records that provide the foundation for historical research in this country. Since 1976, NHPRC has awarded over 4,800 grants. 250 of these to local governments or programs of local records. Two of these awards were made to the Troop County Archives. Both grants have been extremely important in our existence. An additional note about grants, as others have mentioned, they almost always result in jobs. By our estimations, over at least 70% of grant funds go to pay people. At a time of high unemployment, NHPRC grants and pass-through grants to states would stimulate jobs, jobs that often lead to permanent employment after grants end. Many of us in the profession, including myself, got our start in archival work this way. Without NHPRC, the archival community has few options for support in caring for historically valuable records. We have seen the positive impact that NHPRC grants have made in thousands of large and small organizations and communities throughout our country. The current authorized funding level of NHPRC is woefully inadequate. NHPRC should be reauthorized and appropriated at a significantly higher level. In addition to more funding, NHPRC should be expanded to include a pass-through grant program with resources directed to states and localities to ensure that documents and archival records in many forms can be readily used for a host of purposes by the people of this nation. Only by reauthorizing NHPRC and expanding its programs to include pass-through grants to states will we be able to ensure that this important component of the American historical record survives. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Minichu. Um, 
Finally, is Susan Holbrook Purdue, the Director of Documents Compass, and here representing the Association of Documentary Editing, of which she is the incoming president. Ms. Holbrook was formerly the senior associate editor of the Papers of Thomas Jefferson Retirement Series. Uh, Ms. Purdue. Thank you, Acting Chairman Norton. I'm Susan Holbrook Purdue, President elect of the Association for Documentary Editing, or ADE. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to speak on behalf of my professional organization in support of reauthorization of the NHPRC and an increase in its funding. The primary message I want to convey to this committee is just how essential the work is that documentary editors do and its importance to every American. As a society, we need the sort of expertise that editors provide in order to clearly understand the historical record and so that we might have informed and reasoned debate as part of a true democracy. This is not a partisan endeavor, but a mission to establish the definitive works of our historical legacy. This is especially important when it comes to the texts of our founding fathers. These documents are at the core of our nation's history, and they continue to be the substance of significant debate. Many Americans want to lay claim to them, and they should. These documents are part of everyone's story. For this reason, they deserve the time and attention that they receive from the scholars who are now editing them. The ADE was founded in 1978 to promote documentary editing and to build on our shared commitment to the highest professional standards of accuracy of transcription, editorial method, and intellectual access to our nation's documentary heritage. The organization now has more than 350 members who work with a broad range of historical and literary figures. Many of our members depend on NHPRC funding. Editors preserve the documentary record by creating a comprehensive catalog for all the known writings of an individual. We have performed a valuable service for future generations by collecting and preserving these unique archives in one place. Documentary editors play a beneficial role in establishing the documentary record because they authenticate and provide authoritative versions of the letters and documents produced by their subjects. Editors become experts on all aspects of their subject matter, from their handwriting to their habits. The documentary edit editions of, of the Founding Fathers, the papers of John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and George Washington all have a long and integral <coughs> history with the National Archives itself, as do the documents associated with the ratification of the United States Constitution, the first Federal Congress, and the early Supreme Court. Make no mistake about it, these projects are publishing the records of our federal government. One of the most beneficial tasks we perform as editors is ensuring that documents make sense to modern audiences. Editors reveal the hidden meaning in documents through extensive research. This work takes time. Historical documentary editions and records are used by an ever-widening audience, ranging from school children to advanced scholars, as well as genealogists, curators, and the general public. Projects such as the Eleanor Roosevelt Papers produce lesson plans for ages K through 12. Ken Burns' recent uh, documentary film on the national parks drew on the John Muir Papers project that was supported by NHPRC. And recent episodes of American Experience and History Detectives featured editors from three separate NHPRC-sponsored projects. Many editors are now retooling in order to meet the demands of both print and digital publication. In order to respond to this new digital world, they look to organizations such as the NHPRC to provide the necessary funding to enable this to happen. There is substantial work to be done on digitizing and providing additional editorial resources to make the thousands of rolls of microfilm from projects done in the 60s and 70s available on the internet. New efforts will need new support. Nonetheless, our mission as documentary editors has changed little over time, even with the added challenge of publishing online. We will adhere to the same high standards we have always followed, regardless of the ultimate medium. We are indeed at a crossroads. This is true not only for the profession of documentary editing, but for archives and repositories worldwide. As we read about the perceived negative impact of the internet on people as they are increasingly gathering their knowledge through multitasking and sound bites, 
all of which threaten to shorten our attention spans, we recognize the urgent need for reliable, durable, and rich content on the World Wide Web. Now, more than ever, we want the good to drive out the bad. If we cut off support to NHPRC and to the editors and projects that have produced superlative editions for over half a century, we cut off their ability to reach a new global audience in ways none of us could have imagined 20 years ago. Thank you. I couldn't help but, but notice that uh, uh, you're not uh, you're not saying that well, the next step that archivists have to go to is tweeting, <laughs> <laughs> or even Facebook maybe. I don't know. Facebook might not be so bad. Right. Right. <laughs> um, let me uh, ask a series of questions that I think will be important uh, for our record. I want to say that while I represent 600,000 taxpaying residents deprived of the right to vote on what is happening on the floor right now. I certainly vote in this committee and have a strong interest in the testimony you and the witnesses before you have provided. Um, let's start with um, uh, Dr. Gottlieb. Um, could, could you explain the impact of the grants, the NHPRC uh, grants, on the employment of archivists across the country? Uh, you have any sense of whether archivists, for example, are the first to go in budget cuts, the effect that uh, the present recession has had on them, uh, or what it would mean in terms of jobs uh, if this funding were available? In my experience, uh, NHPRC grants uh, almost always create new positions, new jobs, um, to carry out the work that um, the recipients of the grants um, have committed to do. Uh, they, the, 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 the critical resource that archives lack and the reason that they, uh, that NHPRC is so important to them uh, is funding for staff to examine records, to organize them, to preserve them, to um, describe them so that they can be um, easily used. Uh, archives don't buy, generally speaking, don't buy expensive equipment. Um, we don't need to, um, uh, we don't need NHPRC to build buildings for us or to rent space for us. What we need the grants for um, and the work that um, the grants help us do um, is to make the records accessible. And for that, um, the critical resource is people, is staff. And so these grants, in, in, in many, many cases, create, create jobs. Yeah. It's a la labor sensitive, this is a labor sensitive matter then. We're talking about people, uh, not things. Uh, uh, Ms. Franco, uh, you're aware uh, that some have uh, said that, that the NHPRC is is wasteful and redundant. I wonder what your response to that would be and whether you think there are the sources of support to state at the state and local level for the kinds of projects that the NHPRC grants uh, make possible. Uh, well, I, I would say that um, there are obviously other funding sources, uh, but they do not cover the kind of work that is uh, covered by NHPRC. And, um, well, they I, don't cover it in the state's fund, but don't cover the same kinds of work? Uh, well, I can tell you that at, in Pennsylvania, the availability of funding for help for local governments, for other archival groups, and for our own collections uh, is not there. So we really do rely on that, 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 national, uh, that national level. The, um, I know that there was some discussion in the previous panels about the difference between IMLS and NEH and all of the, um, some of the other uh, federal funding uh, uh, programs. Um, I think one of the things about NHPRC is this is not, this is the nuts and bolts. This is the basic stuff. 
Uh, there are, I can tell you that in our organization, our archives, and I think this is repeated, there are backlogs of boxes of records that are there being saved, but they are not available to the public because they haven't been processed, they haven't been described. Uh, and so the, the need f to bring the documents that we hold into a, a format that they can be used uh, is is not the stuff of excitement. It is not the kind of thing that um, uh, granting agencies foundations are funding. Uh, this is the nuts and bolts of our historical record, and NHPRC is the one place that that, that, that comes from. Not uh, Other places will do projects. They'll do exhibits. They'll do other kinds of things like that. But you can't get to those products unless you have the records available to scholars and people who are doing that work. Uh, Ms. Teague, uh, the, the, a number of you have, have indicated examples of work uh, that uh, uh, has been funded through these grants. Uh, are, are there, in, in your view, examples of works that simply work that simply could not or would not have been done except for such a grant? Oh, absolutely. That's especially true in my state of Kentucky. We've had we've been the beneficiary of several NHPRC grants over the past 25 years. One started our electronic records program in 1985, where we started working with state and local governments on electronic records, or as we called them back in the 80s, machine readable records, um, to try to capture the earliest electronic records. So back in Kentucky, we have. Of computer records that go back to the 60s and 70s where some other states may not have had that and that just started with uh, I think it was hundred and eighty thousand dollars from the NHPRC um, currently we have seven staff who are employed working on those issues we work with state and local governments around the state around um, Kentucky we have a commission where we work with the t information technology um, component of state government where we're looking at computer